I'm Ryan. I'm Dan, and this is episode one of Shop Talk. Today, we're talking about our favorite sports cars, but not just any sports cars. We're talking about affordable and classic sports cars that were made before 1995. And they have to be red. <laughs> they don't have to be red. To start off the list, we're talking about one of my favorites because it's one that I own now. The Pontiac Fiero. I think the Fiero is an awesome car to kick off the list because it is honestly insanely affordable. You can find running Fieros for less than $1,000. That's amazing. And you can actually find really decent ones for about $3,000. The Fieros were only produced for five years from 84 to 88, but in just that short amount of time, they actually made about 370,000 of them. There was a lot of misinformation about the Fieros catching on fire. There weren't that many of them that caught on fire, and a lot of it was due to owners not really knowing how to take care of their cars. So one of the coolest things about the Fiero is it's actually a mid-engine car. The engine is behind the driver. The Fieros were available in two different body styles. They have the notch back, and the Fastback. I prefer the Fastback style, that's what I ended up buying, um, but that's just personal preference. There was a 2.5 liter inline four engine, and it was also available in a 2.8 liter V6. So they only got another 0.3 liters out of the V6? They did, but they got 50 additional horsepower. Interesting. And one of the coolest features of the car, of course, pop-up headlights. So let's talk about the Porsche 944. Now this is a Porsche sports car that's not as expensive as you might think. If you've looked at like the 911 and you've thought about buying one of those, you know they're quite a bit of money for an old 911. The 944 was based on the 924, which Porsche made to compete in the Le Mans race in 81. They took that car and they said, how can we make this a production car? And they changed a little bit about it but the body style is very similar. So it has these big wide fenders on the front and rear wheels. And they did some interesting things with the engine then to make it feel like a high-end sports car. Cause they only had room when they were producing the 944 to put in an inline four engine. They made it a 2.5 liter, just like the uh, Fiero. And they- I bet it had more than 90 horsepower though. Yeah, it had 150 horsepower and it went zero to 60 in about eight, 8.12 seconds. It's understandable that the turbo versions of the 944 are much more expensive and they're not really included in our list today. Um, you might be paying upwards of 20,000 for that. But if you wanted a base model, I'm talking like the earlier model of the Porsche 944, you can definitely get one for under 10 grand. Granted, it doesn't look like a typical Porsche. It's mm -hmm. a very different look with that race car kind of style. Well, and talking about the looks of the 944, that really segues well into <laughs> our next car. Mazda RX-7. And the second gen specifically, because the third gen is just way too popular and way too expensive. Mazda actually styled after the 944. Oh yeah, you can absolutely see it. I looked at both those cars in college. They are not identical, but certainly the body shape is very mm. similar. So the FC RX-7 came anywhere from 150 to 200 horsepower. You could get it with a turbo, you could get it naturally aspirated, and it weighed about 2,700 pounds. It's really right in line with all the other cars on our list. The second gen was produced from 85 to 92, and like a lot of the Mazda sports cars, it has that strange rotary engine. A wankle. Rather than having pistons that move up and down like a traditional engine, it has a Dorito, people call it the Dorito, it's kind of this triangular, curved triangular rotor in the middle, and that kind of creates the chambers, and that it, basically that spins, and that's where the combustion and everything else happens. One cool thing about them using that smaller rotary engine is they were able to move it uh, farther back on the chassis, and that gives the RX-7 a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. Nice. Which really, that's what a lot of these cars are all about on our list is the handling, because none of the cars have like an insane amount of horsepower, but they do all handle really well. In 1968, this really cool car came to the United States, and it was called the Oval GT. I think we first discovered it in college, maybe? Yeah, in college, we were roommates and we were looking for sports cars. It's a super unique car, and I think it, it's one of the coolest looking cars on our list. It's also the smallest. It weighs just 2,000 pounds. And that means that even though it only had about 100 horsepower, it still did just fine. The weight to horsepower ratio really matters with these cars. The Opel GT was really just a concept car um, presented by Opel at a lot of car shows in the late 60s. And back then the concept cars were supposed to just look like futuristic machines. They never really expected to make them into production cars. 
But everybody who went to these car shows said, hey, when are you gonna produce this? No, I want one of those. And they had such strong feedback on it that they put it into production. Where's Opel from? Opel is in Germany, I believe. They used to make sewing machines. Opel. But, um, That's how Germans <laughs> talk, apparently. <laughs> so they created this Opel and they sold about 70,000 of them in the US and the price was good. It was 3,500 bucks, um, which was about $1,000 cheaper than the Corvette at that time. And a lot of people called the Opel just a mini Corvette. It had a very similar body style, especially in the front. The fenders kind of flare up a little bit. And so you could tell there's a lot of like drawing on that sort of Corvette styling. You can still get an Opel GT for under $10,000 in good drivable condition. And the other really cool thing about the Opel is they had manual pop-up headlights. Really? Yeah, there's an actual lever in the cab that you pull up on, kind of like an e-brake, so it was it, all like mechanical. All mechanical. Like... The unfortunate thing about the Opel, they're a very cool sports car, but a few years later, another car came on the market that just blew them out of the water. It's the Datsun 240Z. We'll talk about that in a minute. But after that arrived on, in America, there was no way anybody was buying an Opel. So bringing it back to America, the next car on our list and the last one made in the United States is the C4 Corvette. So about 360,000 of them were produced from 83 to 96. Pretty easy to find them for under $10,000 and still in pretty good shape. And honestly, if you guys want to wait and really look, you can find them for even less. Like just recently, I found one for about 6,500 and it was in really good shape. Now you and I actually drove a Corvette after we graduated college all the way down to Tijuana, Mexico and back as kind of a fun celebratory road trip. Yeah, and let me tell you guys, it was such a fun car to drive. It handled one of the best handling cars I've ever driven. I'm sure it's, it's nothing like a modern Corvette, but it was really a blast to drive. It's got a bigger engine than the rest of the sports cars on our list too. Right, it's a 350 V8. It's the only V8 on our list. Um, but surprisingly, the car only weighs about 3,000 pounds. I think it's cool to be able to have a Corvette on the affordable car list. So the next car on our list is the Datsun Z. The 240Z and the 260Z and the 280Z are all pretty much the same car. Mm -hmm. That's the first generation S30 Z car made by Datsun. And they're pretty awesome. They're great. They have a fantastic shape. Mm -hmm. They look like the Jaguar XKE, which was kind of that classic long hood and sloped back end. Mr. K, the guy who came over to the US <laughs> that helped create the Datsun 240Z, he basically researched what Americans would like in a sports car. And he nailed it. He nailed it. And then they mass produced these things. And with 150 horsepower uh, coming out of that engine and a small car, 2,300 pounds for the 240Z. I mean, it handled really well. It went zero to 60 in about eight seconds. And if you ever wanted a sports car but couldn't afford one, you finally could. If you guys don't already know, Dan obviously owns a Z and he's very into them. I bought a 1976 280Z, that was my first Z, and I got it for 1,650 bucks. Yeah, you're not gonna find that anymore. Unfortunately. In fact, a 240Z sold last year for $310,000. What? Three, was it like all original? Like I think it had like 27,000 miles. miles. That's it was super original. That's crazy. Obviously, the Z, the first generation Z car is my favorite car on the list. I have one. We got more videos of my car coming out, just like we got more videos of his mm -hmm. Fiero coming out. But if you're looking for a Z car, definitely get one now. Don't wait. Prices are going up and look for those 280Zs. I think they're a good buy. This list would not be complete without talking about the Mazda Miata. Yeah, this car actually has the world record for being the most produced sports car throughout history. One of the things I love about the Miata is seeing people do things like this to them. I have like been into this off-road sports cars. I think the Miata just pulls off that like apocalyptic <laughs> off-road jacked up vibe pretty well. Yeah, that looks awesome. So that first generation of Miata might not be the best looking car on our list, but is absolutely the easiest one to find for the least amount of money. You can easily find them for under $5,000, and honestly, even less if you wanna go a little higher mileage. The Miata has a 1.6 liter engine that only makes about 113 horsepower, but it only weighs 2,160 pounds. That would be the lightest sort of modern sports car on our list. This whole thing is obviously just our opinion, the cars that we like that are affordable, and we had to choose seven, and these are our seven favorites. But you guys probably have others. Leave them in the comments. We'd love to hear them. We just love hearing about unique, cool sports cars, especially ones that we could afford. And guys, we're still building our channel, and so it would really help us out if you guys would like this video. Hit subscribe if you want to see some more videos like this, and we'll see you next time.